Guys, we are live. How are we doing? I've got Dan and Dale here joining me tonight. We've got a lot of strong men to talk about. England's strongest man and England's strongest woman took place this past weekend. We've got the Royal Albert Hall coming up next weekend. There's so many big competitions coming up. There's the Deadlift World Championships a month away. Lots of things happening. Britain's strongest woman is happening. How are you guys doing? Busy weekend? I'm I'm good. I had Sunday was on not enough sleep. Um, through did, did you go out reasons. Saturday night? I didn't go out Saturday night. No, no. I um, well, I went out for for one beer on Saturday night, but Shiv was celebrating coming second and uh, went out for more than one beer. <laughs> I um, I just uh, just so people watching kind of understand, right? Britain's strongest woman, uh, sorry, England's strongest woman happened on Saturday. We'll talk about the competition in a bit. But the girls like to enjoy themselves after a competition, don't they? Yeah. And they they were trying to drag me out, and I was not having any of it because I had to be up early on the Sunday, and you know I was doing a bit of emceeing and coaching the, the lads as well on the Sunday. So I I didn't want to go out. I think they rolled it. What time did Shiv roll in? Uh, it was four a.m. when I got a phone call saying she couldn't work the hotel door. <laughs> I saw Andrea and a few of the others the next morning. They didn't look good. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it went downhill real quick for all of them as well. There's a few who turned up looking a bit fresh in the morning. And then I think, I think the hangover kicked in at about one o'clock. And yeah, all went downhill. Uh, they, they deserve it. They, the women put on a hell of a show on the Saturday. Yeah. Jesus, what a, what a weekend that was. I mean, we had four different weight classes. The English women, the British women on the whole, I mean, the, the women all over the world are incredible these days, but we do have some absolutely unbelievable athletes. And Top class. Top it's, class. Just, it's just a joy to sit back and watch them, isn't it? Yeah. It's, you know, it's, there's a reason that the, the podiums at World's Strongest Woman and stuff, there's, it's a shock if there's not English women on the podium, you know, or winning it, then England's Strongest Woman is, you know how many world titles were competing at the weekend and world records. Like, yeah. there's there's no easy ride for anyone there, and it's going to be even stronger when we get to the British Championships in. I think it's about six weeks' time. Yeah, yeah I think it's five training today. weeks. So, it's... Yeah. I mean, you got you you're going to add like Annabelle to that list. You're going to add, um, I think, um, Rebecca Roberts is going to be there. You know, the the world champion. It's crazy to think we have. Three heavyweight world champions. We've got uh, like four different world champions in different weight classes. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. And then we've got the Giants live at the end of the year, where the women will be taking part in that as well. Yeah, which is I'm um, I don't know how it's going to run. You know, like in terms of who has to do what and how the events work. But if it if it's done right, I think it's a huge platform for the women as well. Yeah. I think it's a spectacle, isn't it, more than anything? Yeah, it's like. Look at look at these ladies. Look what they can do. They're competing with the uh, top of the top, top athletes, the male athletes, and it's kind of like I think it's more to see. Look how far the ladies' side of the sports really come on. They're now at Giants Live, you know. And who's not going to say in five years, maybe a bit more time, these ladies might have their own Giants Live? Can you imagine that? Well, I yeah. I, so. I can remember my first experience of a strong woman competition, and there was two two women competing. That was it. Yeah. Two women at Britain's Strongest Woman. Now, you know, every weight class is stacked full of tremendous competitors. I've been lucky to fly over, all over the world and, and watch the women now. And, and it's just, it's a pleasure to watch. And, and they, yeah. they, they dig deep and they work hard. I mean, all talking right. digging deep. Yeah. Let's talk, <laughs> about, let's talk oh, about Donna Moore. Oh. So um, those that need to be introduced to Donna Moore, probably the GOAT when it comes to the female side of the sport. She's three-time world champion, multiple winner of, of many titles. She's dropped body weight. She's kind of really brought herself down. She's competing in the under 82 kilo class. Yeah. You guys know her very well. You know how determined she is. First event was the Axel for Max. And she opens on 100 kilos, which, by the way, her opening weight wins the event. But yeah. she tears her bicep. Not just a little bit off. Well, it was, you know, Gab, the cameraman for the Stoltmans. 
Yeah. He was filming Donna lifting and she put it down and I went, she's injured. Like I'm up, like straight backstage, like what's up with Donna? And he said, like, how did you know? And it's like, she wouldn't like, she went to pick um, a chalk up or salts or something and her arm just didn't move right. So uh, what's it? Lisa Corolini was there, who's physio, strong woman, sort of knows everyone. And she started off putting some tape, you know, like I can't get confused with cameras here. Yeah. And then the next event, the tape was here and then here. And she she won all those events. So, so it. Mate, she didn't. I know, I know like, so it happened in the axle, then we had the dumbbell, the um, farmers, and so on. And then she done a full stone run. With one arm, basically. And I think she she won it, or she'd have been close to winning it if she didn't. Like, mm, come on, who does a full stone run with a fully detached bicep? It's, it's mental, isn't it? It's Donna, though. <laughs> you know, I know it's fucking mad. You know what I mean? Wow. You realise that? You know, she came up to me when uh, before the farmers, and I was like, "Are you good?" She's like, "No." I was like, "Well, keep your tricep tense. Like, let's get through it." Um, deadlift, she's like, I've got figure eight, I don't need to hold on. Like, that's it. Like, that's that's what strong man, strong woman, that's what the sport's about, though. You know, I it's think a, that's another level of like mental power. That though, that's amazing. Like, I find it amazing watching her because she was so phys- like, you could see she was angry, she was yeah. pissed. She wanted to, you know, she wanted to. Well, she's got a goal of becoming the world's strongest woman at under 82. She, yep. you know, she's she's dropped down, and I was like, Donnie, you got nothing to prove to anyone. You're you're the best, but you could see the the kind of anger in herself that this had happened, and the determination to still go on and win. I mean, it was you know, the the under eighty twos are strong. It was a who do we have in second place? We had Alexandra Alexa, who's one of my clients actually. I was yep. super proud of her doing so well. Oh, she was and amazing. then Gemma Ferguson back as well, who's a very good under eighty two kilo athlete. Yep. So she had. You know, big opposition against her, but Donna dominated with a torn bicep. Yeah, but it's Donna Moore, you know. It's... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> good point. It, that it is, point's no, what it is. The question you know, you is, see, you see, the question is, can Donna come back now in time for Britons or, or Worlds? What do you think she's going to do? Not Britons, not Britons. Well, straight after England's, it, the the question was, does she get it fixed? Like. Or wait until after Brits, or wait till then. Looking on her Instagram today, it sounds like she's got an appointment to try and get a date to get it fixed. So tomorrow, tomorrow. Yes, yeah, I'd hope. I'd hope she gets it fixed. Hope she gets in with a good, good person. Um, it sounds weird, but there's there's good people you want putting biceps back on. And from what she- I understand, it's where she works so it's weirdly you say that guys ben and danny two of my clients who have both ruptured biceps not my fault by the way three three sounds like your fault (laughs) but they both got the same surgeon at darlington memorial hospital believe it or not they've had the both same surgeon that both had successful recoveries and come back bigger better and stronger and that's where she's doing the um got the appointment apparently so i keep him in a job basically yeah, she just needs to be smart. I mean, it's it's funny with biceps because it's become a common injury in the sport. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, twenty years ago, it was a it was, it, your arm would look a mess after a bicep surgery. Have you guys ever seen Ollie Thompson's scar? I've not seen his scar, but Terry's bicep from multiple tears. Well, I mean, between was it your arm wrestling video in Dubai? There was two good biceps between three of you, so it's. <laughs> But what I was saying is Ollie Thompson was, you know, he's a great strong man just before you guys came around, really. But he tore his bicep and it was a mess. You know, it looks like a surgeon has just kind of hacked away at it. Whereas now the guys and the girls have just got tiny little slits and, you know, yep. the, the recovery is much, much quicker and they're coming back from these injuries much, much faster. The Is it back on? Yeah, Ollie's, Ollie's biceps back now, but when you look at the scar that he had and the, the recovery process, it took a long time. Whereas now, the surgeries are so much more efficient and athletes are able to recover much, much faster. Yeah, it, it's for whatever reason, and that's a whole different conversation, 
it's becoming very common at the moment with strongmen to pop a bicep off. And I think with the right rehab and the modern surgery, like you say, it, it the turnaround's pretty quick and it it seems good. You know, people seem to maybe their first competition, they're a bit like edgy about it, but you see got you forget that they've had a bicep off now. Yeah. I think um I think Terry came back in about three months. I remember he tore his bicep and three months later he was at World's Strongest Man. Yeah. And so. I think yeah, she'll have to miss she'll have to miss Brits, but hopefully she can get to worlds. To focus. Yeah. And that's she's got time for that. I think she'll be back. Yeah. And Jenny coaches her. Jenny knows, you know, she's she's not daft. She's not gonna push her too soon. She's not gonna push her into it. You know, it's it's Donna Moore at the end of the day. She could have a few months off and put a good showing in at any competition. So being sensible, I think she'll be she'll be good. Yeah, absolutely. So let's have a look at the other weight classes. Um, Dan's partner was competing this weekend. Shiv performing really well. It was the under 63 class? Uh, I think it's 64 now 64. to get into right. the They've they changed it, haven't they? And, and now I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like the old guy that can't remember. <laughs> yeah, just strong woman. Just one weight class, just crack. <laughs> um, but yeah, Shiv, Shiv smashed it and... You know, coming coming second at England's Strongest Woman to Shannon is, you know, you've come second to the World's Strongest Woman. You, yeah. you know, you've not had a bad day out and taking a taking an event win on the farmers as well. So, you know, it's for me, it's it's tricky because as a coach, you know, you straight away think like, well, why didn't she win? What do we need to do better? But I think she showed she she should be at that level. She belongs at that level. And you know, beyond England, she should be. You know, Shannon had to work at the weekend. She had to. She had to win. So, um, it's this, just this really is good. this is a weight class that the British are incredible at. It's terrifying. I mean, if you think um, Shannon Clifford wins, she's the current world champion. Yep. You got Shiv, who's unbelievable, improving all the time. Potentially, Rhiannon enters into this weight class as well. One yeah. of the, the statically strongest females we've ever ever seen. There's yeah. Kate Connolly, who's just broke the log record at 101 kilos. The, which... Lifting 101 kilos at under 63, under 64 kilo body weight. Yeah. And, you know, she that was her second attempt at it. Like she said in a post, she messed the line up on the first attempt and had another pop. I think she broke the British record on a first attempt, failed 101, then got 101. And Absolutely mental. Yeah. Um, I, I believe, I, I think she's moved up, but Chloe was in this weight class as well at, at one point, wasn't she? Uh, Chloe's moving up. I think she's moved up sort of officially now. Um, but yeah, she was... There's just so much depth in the under 64s over here that it's sort of easy to say, you know, Rhiannon's in it, Rhiannon will walk away with it. But, you know, Shannon won Worlds last year or this year, uh, last year. And no one's guaranteed a win. And it's, it's exciting. I'm really looking forward to Brits as well and seeing with the events they've put out, I think it's a really open competition. Cool. We've got a few questions coming in through. So Splat Boy one, let's go. What did I miss? You haven't missed an awful lot yet, buddy. We've just been talking about well, a few drunk stories about the, the women from the weekend. Uh we're just talking about England's strongest man right now. We've gonna we're gonna talk about the uh strongman classic, which is gonna be happening this weekend, and potentially the deadlift world championships as well later in the year. But if you guys have questions for myself, Dan or Dale, please feel free to shoot them over. I'm sure Auntie Liz is in the comments somewhere checking them, <laughs> <laughs> making sure there's no sex bots and whatever else that might be in there. Oh no, they're the ones we want. <laughs> Liz is the sex bot today. <laughs> I've got my YouTube, I've got my YouTube one and I'm on writing them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on from the 63s, um, you know, who, who impressed you this this weekend in the other weight classes on the women? Um, it's it's trick. Jenny Todd, who I also coach, um, her first competition in 
God knows how many years, you know, at a top level. Um, coming third, sort of joint second, but third on countback. I was really impressed with that sort of showing that she can sort of hang at that level with a few mistakes. But Rachel was unbel- like just dominant in the 70, 73s. Um, like daft, really daft to see what she's doing. Um, her overhead was comfortable and again chucking 100 kilos overhead um and then donna being donna obviously it's the it's one of the most impressive things i've seen generally in strongman yeah I, I agree. yeah it's daft dan rachel's got this talking, weird level rachel was amazing in the 70 is that 74s 73 73. I'll get it right eventually. It uh, lines up with the pound weights now, so okay. it's shifted a little bit, I think. I'll let, I'll let Dale talk about Rachel in a second, but I just want to give Dan Dan to take a look at this. There's um a lot of people talking about your appearance in the comments, Dan. But, Which is um, weird, because King I look T so here normal. Says Dan in Crocs and socks, mullet, pants falling down is a great look, so keep doing I what mean, you're doing. I mean, it's what you're stuck with, so you might as well like it. <laughs> You won't there, change, yeah. mate. <laughs> no, he, he's not going to change now. You know that. No. I don't um, want that. Dale, don't want tell, that. tell us about Rachel, because she's kind of, you know... Well, well I've trained to... Rachel for three years now. And, like, I've, I've said this to Dan quite a lot of times. She actually trains quite bog standard to how she competes. Hmm. She's just one of those people who can... I think on a competition day, you get an extra... 25% out of her, and I'm not joking. Two weeks pre Brits on the deadlift, she was knocking out zero reps training with me. Like, she'd come to the gym and she wasn't even getting one rep because she was that concerned and worried about everything. And I was like, What are you doing? She gets so worked up when she trains, but when she competes, it's like she just opens up this whole new level where she doesn't stop. Yeah, I was it's thinking about it today. I generally think that she can be a world champion. I've, I've, I honestly do believe that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, like 100%. I don't think if she gets her, I think a deadlift needs to come up a little bit. Yeah, that's the main, that's the main issue. To come up, but there's nothing that I've not seen her do any event where I've thought, oh, she's not good at this. Is, like, she, planning be to, oh, is she planning on going to Yeah, OSG she's qualified. Yeah, because you've come, I think it was seven, four, eight last year in the yeah. under 73. So she got, she got the top 10 getting on back invite, I think it was. So she's going straight back. She's going to be doing Britain's in six weeks and then the Itchy Worlds after that. So obviously the goal this year for her world is a podium. There's no, yeah. there's no other doubt, but she's very, she's very driven that way though. So like, she honestly, have, do you know when you get those clients who literally are just on your case because they want to be better? And it's not like her being like, silly or like making these mad sort of goals of it literally is that was rubbish and I'm like it wasn't that bad she's going it's rubbish it's not good enough and I'm like whoa okay then it was rubbish let's work it out <laughs> Do you know what I mean but yeah no she's a pleasure to train and she's a, she's a brute she's just a brute yeah that's it's the best way I can describe it there's nothing there's nothing in her mind that she can't do if she puts her mind to it and I do generally believe she's got a massive future like you say she's won England's at 80s twice, now at 70s, and it's kind of like she's proved that she is on that other level now where you people think are competing against class her. That she stays at? Well, when she was doing the 80s, she was still only like 75 kilos anyways. Yeah. So this, this is the perfect weight class for her. The addition of the 74s or 73s, whichever it is, is, is a great <laughs> weight class because that jump from 63 to, you know, 82 is very big. Yeah, it's massive. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like the weight division in strongman where you've got one or five straight or open. It's that weird one because like I think a lot of ladies will naturally sit at would you sit would you agree with 70, 80 kilo ish? Yeah. Seventy is like it's a natural weight for you know average height women who lift to be at yeah. and either having to force yourself to gain weight or to cut just seems stuff. So having it it's just, it makes sense. I think that's it why does. the Brits are so good, though, is because we were the last to adopt it. Ooh. 
so the 64s or 63s as they were then they were chasing 82 numbers there was sort of a bit of blending you know we've got one less weight jump so the 63s were a lot closer to the 82 weight yeah because that's sort of like your category that you above you which you're sort of aiming for yeah and i think mm. that's why they're so so good at the moment is i mean the the brits events came out and then within five minutes the brits events were heavier <laughs> yeah because all the all the 64s said like it, it's like we're stronger than this like let's put the weight up yeah, 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 that's fair. Whatever. I'll, I'd never complain about a competition being made. Ever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be fine with that. If yeah. anything, I just want things. In an ideal world for me is like a York, max weight, 10 metres. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Deadlift, max reps, as heavy as possible, where you get two reps and you win. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That we'll work on that. lastly let's give the the heavyweight women um a little bit of limelight obviously lucy underdown winning england's strongest man it's her first big title yeah she's obviously an incredible deadlifter the current deadlift world record holder but great to see her win a title this weekend and i can't wait to see the battle at britain's when you've got three or four of the best heavyweights in the world all going at each other Annabelle, oh. Rebecca, Andrea, yeah. and then and Lucy. obviously Lucy, Lucy all going head to head. Wild, isn't it? We had England's strongest woman, and Annabelle Chapman sat watching it. Yeah, like you've got the, one of the best presses in the world. Just yeah. sat watching, like because she's already qualified. Like it's unbelievable where the women are at the moment. Is it's amazing, and Brits is going to be, yeah, next level. I think. Was it yeah, Brits last year? Annabelle won, wasn't it? She won Brits last year. Yeah, she, yes. she pipped Rebecca, didn't she? She won. Yeah, which Brits. is why. And she won out in um, Dubai as well. She won the Wush, yes, Yeah, that's did. right. Yeah. And that's because you, you just flew back and did it straight away, yeah. didn't she? Yeah. Was and it like Rebecca, the next Rebecca went on and won the worlds? You know, mm. it's it's amazing the standard. <laughs> and UKs, she's just won UKs. She beat Donna at yep. UKs. Yes. Yeah, so, do you know what? Getting back to that, you look at Donna now. She's dropped a substantial amount of like weight, and she's still competing in eighties and open still. You know. Yeah, yeah. but again, Donna. Here we go. <laughs> she's she's done them all. She was the first strong woman I ever saw. In- was she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Northern England's strongest man in Spennymoor. Uh, oh, the Yard. Uh, yeah, the Yard. It's a special place in English strongman. And uh, she broke the Stone World record there. And lads in the Northerns qualifier failed it. And she was... <laughs> she That's not- the problem now with these women. They are so good. When they go into a gym or a comp, there's men moving away. I've yeah. had some of the strong men come and train at my gym, and you see it like the men are moving away. They're they're, they're intimidated by by it's, these girls, but there's no reason to be. They're all lovely. <laughs> you know, when you get to know five them, for reps, like yeah. you, anyone goes into a normal gym, pulls five plates for reps, people are looking at you. Yeah. You're a monster. And when women are going into strongman gyms and pulling five plates for reps, six plates, like they're putting more and more weight on. <laughs> just go, well, I was at a novice comp recently and Lucy would have beaten all the men on the deadlift. Yeah. I think she beat most men that's, anyways. That's, that's a strongman comp. It's not like just some guy in the gym. These yeah. guys train to be strong. That's mm. how freaky <laughs> a deadlift is. And then you think, what have they got? 85, 90 kilos for reps for the Opens on log at Brits. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's just been dropped. They they, they were going to do 95, and I think they've lowered the weights of the log. Um, I think okay. it was 65, 75, 75, 85 or something like that. No, it's 70. Like that. Dan, the lightweight is 70. Uncle Eggnog um, sent a super chat and said he's got so much respect for Dan Hipkiss. He's an amazing man. So well, that's, that's lovely to hear. Lovely, he doesn't know Dan as well as um, Dale and I do. I'm gonna say it's lovely but inaccurate, but <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, he's telling the truth, eh? it's very inaccurate. 
<laughs> so the events of Britain's Strongest Woman, it's coming up in um, six weeks' time. They have got Atlas Stones, and the lightweights are going 70 to 110. The 70s are going 80 kilos to 120. There's five stones, goes up in 10 kilo jumps. The under 82s are going from 90 to 130 kilos, and the open women will be going from 100 to 140 kilos. That, so that, that was the first three stones at Britain's Strongest Man two years ago. Well, there was, there was a time that the, the women's heavyweights was the same weights that they did at World's Strongest Man. <laughs> yeah. Um, log for reps. So it's going to be 70 kilos, 75 kilos, 80 kilos, and 85 kilos. That is a drop down in what it was originally. Because originally mm -hmm. the heavyweights were going to be doing 95 and the under 82s are going to be doing 85. So they've made that a little bit lighter. The light um, weights have gone up, though. Yeah, five kilo. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an interesting one for me. So the under 60s, under 64s are doing 70 kilos. And it's only five kilos jump, jumps up each class. It almost gets to the point where it's a bit easier for the heavyweights, I think, there. I think 70 to 75 makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think the 80 twos or three, whatever the 80 category is now. We'll just say 60, 70, 80 opens. Can we do that? Yeah, that'll work. Because Loz is getting very confused. I am. I'm really confused. Um, I'm sure the girls are going to be in the, the comments kind of correcting me. But the problem is it, it has I recently changed. 90, so I, think. I need to be forgiven. <laughs> I think 80, 90 would make sense. I agree with that. Like it's taking like, that extra jump. Because you've got, look at the opens who are competing. Like, what's Annabelle's log? 130, 135, is it? Well, um, Andrea has the record at 135. I think Annabelle's around 130. You've got, you know, Rebecca in there. Wild. You've yeah. got Lucy. They're, Wild. they're all big lifters. Um, it's going to be quite a few reps, I think, at 85 kilos. Let's it's... make it 100. <laughs> what the stupid thing is, it could be. <laughs> Yeah, it, it right. could be, and they still get it. I think. I think the thing is that the organisers want to make sure everyone's got a shot at oh. trying to get a rep. I think yeah. sometimes you do have to look at the whole picture of who's in the competition. Obviously, yeah. those four are incredible, but there's other women competing as well that are still great athletes. But we have to remember we have the elite. You know, four of the elite level strong women yeah. on the planet. We're lucky. We're very lucky. Spoilers, yeah, to be sometimes fair. it's easy just to look at those, but there, there's a whole list of athletes going to be competing. So I understand it. After that, we have the car deadlift. So it's going to be a 16-inch handle, 200 kilos for the lightweights, 230, 260, and then the heavyweights at 290 kilos. Yeah, like... That's pretty mental. That's a heavy, heavy car deadlift. Um, and then they like, move on to sandbag load. So they're going to load four bags, 10-meter carry over a four-foot bar, and it's four bags, 50, 60, 70, 80 for the lightweights. Six, and it just goes up in 10 kilo jumps. So 60, 70, 80, 90, 70, 80, 90, 100. And then the heavyweights starting at 80 up to 110 kilos. Do you know what? Heavy, quite heavy the last sandbags, aren't they? For like the pickups, to be fair. Like 110 90, kilo sandbag is no joke. <laughs> even to like the lightweights, a 90 sandbag. kilo sandbag is not light, you know, like no. from, from floor pickup. Like, They're going to be it, feeling it. it. And the final yeah. event is super yoke for 30 meters, which is, you know, that's a, that's a distance on the super yoke. Yeah. Is that just drop and turn in it? Yeah. 15, 15 meters 15. drop so, turn and, and back. 220, 240, 260 and 280 kilos. It's, it's a brutal comp. It's a really heavy comp. The, uh, I think <laughs> like it, it's, it's a heavy, it's a heavy show, but you know, you go in a hundred to one forty on stones for for anyone. Like what was what were the Brit stones? The light sets, 100, 120, 140. Like mm -hmm. you talking about the Giants live show, you know, if they use the light set of stones, the the open women could be loading the first three. And then tag Tom in for the last two, and I think GB Rebecca Roberts would uh, have a good chance of uh, doing all right in them, you know, because she can load stones like. Do you know what? I don't yeah. think it's long until we see a woman load a one eighty stone. But they tried at the Arnold's. They tried. It's it's, it's it going to happen soon. See it. You can see it. It is. It's going to happen soon. 
me and Dan it, done so much work impressive. on that event, didn't we, mate? I yeah, shouted a lot at various women and felt bad. <laughs> no, you didn't. Dale, Dale you I were emceeing on the Sunday at England's and we had the men. Now, this was a great competition. 20 oh, of the top, class. you know, I, I, I like to say the top up and coming English athletes because obviously you take out the elite superstars, but yeah. this is a real good indication of guys to look out for. Um, Shane Flowers won this competition last year. He went on and competed at Britain's Strongest Man. He's gone on to get, you know, do well at Europe's Strongest Man. So this is a real stepping stone. And, and this was a, a great competition. Really I will say time. what I said to you before, right? The strength and depth we have, I won't talk about Scotland and Ireland just for now because we're talking about England, but the strength we have as a as a little country in depth. So let's take out like the Luke Richardson's, Pixie, Adam Bishop, and Shane. Let's just say we'll just put them to a side and Felix and them sort of guys. Those 20 lads there, like especially like the top 10, were really good. Do you know what I mean? The level was absolutely awesome. Like you know yourself, Lodge, you know, like we're, we're Jack. Ryan, all of them have done UK strongest man, Ben's done UK strongest man. You know what I mean? We had a lot of like guys there who've competed at a half decent level already, and they were just going head to head. And you could see the quality, even in like some events. And from Kane, uh, the new guy on the block, things like that. He's, really impressive. I think he'd run slower without the farmers. Yeah, Kane yeah. Francis really impressed me. So he's a, a new guy to, to look out for for people that don't know who he is. But he was very impressive this weekend. Um, very you know, strong. Ben right. Williams, we all expected to see him do well. Obviously, Dale, you coach him, and he's he's got some big comps coming up this year. He probably had the pressure of being the favourite this weekend. So, right, the thing was with this, Ben had a lot of pressure on him to win. He didn't actually put pressure on himself to win. He put pressure on himself to perform, not necessarily yeah. win. So we went in there with the mind frame of coming top three in the deadlift, which we got straight away. Um, and then... After that, we knew the York was going to be a great event. I said top five and that. I said because obviously you've got the likes of Jack and some other guys are no great Yorkers and it's literally a few seconds in it, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, and then the dumbbell, that was like went to plan. We still got top two or three in that. When whatever happened, happened. It doesn't really matter with the dumbbell. It just doesn't matter. And then the farmers. So this was the thing with Ben with the farmers. The goal before this whole competition was you finish the farmers. I don't care how long it takes. You just finish them because... It's a real weak event from the past years, blah, blah, blah. You've been doing it in training, but like you know, Laws, like you know, Dan, training means jack shit sometimes when you when you go on that competition stage, yep. you know? Yeah. And it was a strange one because he flew to the line and then the 15, but spoke to, <laughs> spoke to Ben about it. And it was like, it was like a rabbit in the headlights. It was like, I don't think he expected it to move that fast and then he couldn't pick it back up. I was like, what was wrong? And he went, I don't know, I just couldn't pick it back up. And I was like, oh my God, what's going on? Because obviously I was I was emceeing and I spoke to you a lot on the day, um, Loz, so I couldn't yeah. really say much because I don't want any of the athletes or anything to feel like I'm getting involved when I'm at work. So yeah. like Dan, Dan's done a lot of the work for me on that day, so thanks a lot for that, Dan. He was speaking well, to a lot of lads. Some choice words to him after the fight. Yeah, and it's, it's just hindsight, you know what I mean? Every other event he'd done well. The axle has got a problem with mobility, you know, he needs to get an extra like six inches up to his chin so he can get underneath it. So, coming second, but we knew coming into this how good Ryan was because Ryan's beat Ben before and Ben's beat Ryan before. Ryan beat Ben at um, Ultimate England of 2020 and then Ben beat him at UK's. They were in the same group yeah. together. So, but <laughs> Ryan coming like a bat out of hell that competition. He was so consistent. It was unbelievable. Like, I remember I was... seeing it after the Farmers. We were like, Oh my God! What's what Ryan's turned up, hasn't he? He's had a yeah. couple of years well, rest, I, I, and he's all right. I was so proud of Ryan because so no one was really talking about him beforehand, nah. and obviously I, I get to see his training each week, and I, I knew he was in shape. But it, like you guys know yourself, it's about putting it in on the day, and he hasn't competed for two years, so oh, no there was that kind of pressure of first comp back for from a while. But the moment I saw him in the morning, he just looked really chilled. You know, he looked like yeah. he was there. He focused, but having fun with it as well. And he just put in a flawless performance. Every single yeah. event, he got a PB on the deadlift. And then just he was like top three, top five on almost every event. It was, it was just consistent. It's perfect way to win. Like, yeah. Be consistent. I think, was it 15 kilo PB on deadlift? Like, I think he got, uh, yeah, 15 kilo deadlift PB. Then <laughs> you can't be mad at it. 
I think he was about fourth on the yoke. I think he was top like three. Nothing, though. Yeah, top like three on the dumbbell, top three on the axle. He won farmers. the farmers, and I think yeah. he was second on the stones. He just put in a an absolutely brilliant, consistent yeah. performance. When you've got 20 athletes competing, consistency is really important. Mate, one bad event. You could win all five, you could win five events. Come last in that sixth event, you end up fifth still. Well, one of my other guys that was competing, Jack, Jack. won three events. He did. And, and he did, ended yeah. up six overall. And, he, you know, it almost went perfect for him. He, his plan was to get a, three, a 360 deadlift because he knows deadlift is – I mean, we're talking 360. It's still a big weight, but deadlift is a weaker event for him. And then – Imagine. The goal was – is a rubbish deadlift. <laughs> <laughs> that's Nowadays, the standard we're looking at now in these crazy, competitions. He wins the yoke. He wins the dumbbell and he wins the axle. The farmers have been going really well in training. He trained, I trained farmers with him a few weeks ago and he beat me. And I was Ooh. like, I'm, I'm not at my best right now, but he was looking quick and fast and his grip was holding out. I was like, if his grip holds out, he could do pretty well because he moves quick. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, he, does yeah. he moves fast. Something just kind of went on his wrist. He said, because of the mishap on the, dumb, the, the dumbbell, the, way, the event before, he had the wrist wrap on for a long time and he's been having an issue with his wrist. And I think he just rushed the start, stumbled, went down, and his grip was just giving out big time. But mm. I was proud of him for to keep trying because it would have been easy to just be pissed off and, and walk off yeah. when it's not going well. But he kept trying to go as far as he could until the time ran out. So, you know, it was good to see. And he's still young, still going to learn, still going to come back better. But to win three events at his age, at that level comp, um, he's got yeah, weapons to challenge the top guys. Yeah. Winning one event at like a national competition, you'd be really happy about, you know. Yeah. Like, but winning three, I think the thing is with Jack there, I sent him a, I sent him a message. I think it was earlier on the day about it actually, and I was saying like you, you realize that like you're so young and you've got so much time to get better. And I said, obviously you're working with laws, you have done for a lot of years. Like, there's nothing really that you can't really achieve given yeah. time. You know, he's he's already doing actual. Has he won UK's junior twice now? Once. Yeah, once, once sorry, once, yeah. and then he's and then he's been the UK's strongest man. He's done really well at England, strongest man like two times, and he's still only twenty four. Yeah, and he's his overhead's a... mental. Yeah, he's, he's... he's gonna. He... <laughs> I mean, we've got some incredible overhead lifters in in the UK, but he is he's world class overhead. There's no. Mate, question he was about. pressing that axle the other day with his feet together and strict pressing it. I was watching it from behind, like, what's going on here? Like, it was like, how was he even doing that? Uh, he's, he's worked hard to be fair because he's he likes the one rep stuff and obviously this was about reps and, and endurance reps. and we've been beasting him focusing on trying to you know prepare him for eight reps if needed and he, he he's not enjoyed that at all but to be fair he's put the work in each week and it paid off on those events but we need to go away and work on a few weaknesses but he, he did really well i was proud of all the boys um you know the lads that i coach but you know watching the likes of the, the new guys like Kane, watching even um, Mitch Flowers, who probably feels the pressure from his brother because his brother did so well last year and has gone on to World's Strongest Man. I think a lot of people expect him to do the same, but it takes time. You guys know as, as well as me, it doesn't just happen just like that. And I think he just needs a bit more competition experience. Yeah, I think it's easy to get caught up in the hype a little bit. And wherever that hype's coming from, it... It doesn't really help, and he's got a lot of potential, but it needs, I think, the right guidance and at the right time. And I think he could. He he's really like he's crazy strong, like a really accomplished powerlifter. So he's got the building blocks. It's just doing the right stuff and getting the right support. I think. Me and Loz had a word at the weekend, didn't we, mate? And like, I know you won't be bothering me saying it. I just basically turned around and said, "Look." You can't think you're going to go down the same path as your brother. It doesn't really work like that because you're your own person, your own individual. He obviously trains with Kane and realised how well he's been doing in his training. I said, like, his dad was actually there as well. And I just said, you've got to focus on yourself and, like, stop putting so much pressure on yourself. You've done two competitions. Yeah. I said, get yourself out there, enter a few Opens competitions, and, do you know, just get some experience, different kit, different competitors, different venues, and just get used to competing. And, like, you'll be so much better for it. And he was like, oh, no, but I don't want to drop down. And I was like, there's enough to drop down from, you know. And I said, like, get into, like, the level which we all strive to be on as strong men and stuff takes time, experience, yeah. etc. You'll just only get better. And I think it kind of, it kind of, like, 
seeing him like relax a little bit, do you know what I mean? Because I think you I think you put that much pressure on himself because of his brother and how well he did. He can sometimes feel like he has to do that when he really doesn't. So yeah, do you know what? He's got a bright future ahead of him. He do you just think, needs to chill. Do you think too many times athletes now they they don't want to go through that kind of learning phase? They just want to be at the top. I and think giants they kind of rush things a little bit. People need to remember that Giants Live isn't a stepping stone. Giants Live is the end. Like even the final boss. <laughs> yeah, there is, there's not even a low level Giants Live comp. You can't yeah, say, no, no, no. "Oh, I'm going to go and do a shit Giants Live." Like, it doesn't work. You don't get into Giants Live and then I'll get there. Then I'll get better. It's, it's funny, we're going to talk about Giants Live now because obviously we've got the the classic coming up this weekend and I don't think people realise how high a level these shows are. Yeah. It's, and, and sometimes you can get to them too quickly. And I think we've seen that, you know, he, he, he's doing amazing now, but Gav Bilton, for instance, you yeah. know, you get to these level shows and suddenly you're in with monsters. You're in with absolute killers that at 80%, they're still awesome. And a lot mm. of the kind of younger guys, they think they need to be at 100% all the time. And they do. They need to be at 100% to compete against those guys mm. to just even look like they belong. But they need to go and do some of these other shows, get that experience and keep progressing because it takes time to get to that level. Once you're in there with the likes of the Stoltmans, with the likes of Novikov, you know, Kiliashkovskis, the Lysises, these absolute freaks of nature that... They are the elite of the elite. They can do this week in, week out at 80%. And but you still know that they off. started off not like that, though. They had Absolutely. to gain experience. and just Like, yeah. how many years was Tom competing down, like, the ultimate routes and doing yeah. Scotland? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Has, has Luke won Scotland five times, is it? Five times. Five times, yeah. yeah. So you think Luke was doing that X amount of years ago, and he, with his first Britons, he couldn't press, like, a 150 log, blah, blah, blah. I, do you know what I mean? Like, I used these to guys remember... have been through it. I remember Luke coming to comps and kicking his ass all the time. Same with Tom, you know, yeah. they, and, but they kept coming back. They weren't worried about getting beat. They, they, they came, they learned, you know, and the, I think one of the best things that happened to Tom was he had a terrible performance at Britain's Strongest Man one year. Yeah. And you see two types of people in that situation. 2019, some, I think that was. Yeah, some people will give yeah, up because so. they, they can't take getting beat. Tom learned from it. And that's what you've got to do. You know, you get beat, you go away, you work harder, you come back even better. You learn a lot. You learn a lot more from losses than you do wins. Oh, so no. get stuck into to these other shows. Do you learn think? How to compete. Do you think guys these days, and sorry, some competitors, are too scared to maybe test themselves against heavier competitions because they're too afraid of like what people might think about them on the internet, what the friends might think because they're like, oh, but I need to win a trophy. I think a lot of people are too scared to actually just go to a competition and try and be better than better themselves, hit a comp PB, gain experience, and also get used to just how a competition day works, how you work, you know what I mean? Yeah. What food to eat, when to drink, how, like, I don't know, like, oh, well, that's a massive weakness. I need to work on that. And just deal with the pressure of competitions, down signals, getting get, getting used to everything on a whole comp, comp Absolutely. experience, you know? I actually chatted with a, a few of the guys that were there on the weekend. And I said, you don't need to be 100% to compete in this comp. You need to be mm. 85 90%. And you need to just get stuck in and learn to be competitive. Learn that yeah. nothing. How many times... Has a competition gone hundred percent to plan? Well, just pretty good. Oh, here we go. You've got you've got the freak of nature. I wondered there that... how long this was going to take for time. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm talking about on the he's way. He's been up. sat there like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, world, worlds did go to plan. To be fair, it went I'll pretty well. Out the notebook now. Let's, let's take ninety-five percent of the time, <laughs> it doesn't go to plan. You know, it's when you go to competitions, continue. you got in your head what you think you're capable of, and you make a mistake. Someone does mm -hmm. better than you expect. You fuck up an event. You you kind of, you know, you you miss a, a, a PB lift that you're going for. And oh, you just got to roll with it and move on to the next event. I've done you comps where up. my best event's gone to shit. And I thought, you've got two options in that situation. You can either let it affect you and then the rest of the comp will be crap. Or you block it out and you move on and you get on with the next event. And that's yep. that comes with experience. Mate, I had that in 2020. I had possibly... Best preparation for a competition I'd ever had. It was my first 105 comp 
Um, I'd just come second at Arnold's Australia, second at Arnold's Europe, and I got into um, Arnold's America. It was my second time there, but I'd moved up a weight category. I went from the 80s, 90s to the 105s. And the events, the first four events, were absolutely perfect for me. It was a log for reps, a deadlift for reps, um, farmers and a York. And it was literally like, you put those four events in front of me, I couldn't ask for anything better. Do you know what I mean? You can put a corner's yeah. wheel in there that I don't like, and with those four, I still wouldn't care. Yeah. Um, and I remember I come, I won the deadlift. I think I come second or third on the log, which is fine. Farmers is my best event by a mile. I hadn't been beaten on Farmers in about three years at this point. I've won it in nearly every single competition I did. Billy Big Bollocks here. This is no problem for me. These events are absolutely great. Shoot off. The Farmers both kick in and I trip over. And I end up finishing the farmers about 20 seconds longer than what I should have probably go, go and collect them. Somehow I managed to just regroup myself. I knew I couldn't get through to the next day because I'd absolutely fluffed it. Went and done the York and still managed to come in top three straight with the York. But I knew what I took away from that experience was don't be a knobhead when you're good at something. Respect <laughs> it. Number one. And number two. I like to feed off energy. So I was there with um, Ben and a couple of other guys who were training. And I thought, if they look at me acting like a big child at a competition and kicking off because I went on my way, I wanted to have like positive energy around them and show them, you know what? No matter what happens, you just dust it off and you go again because you never know what goes to happen. So I knew the next time I competed, right, Dale, you might be half decent at something. I mean, guess what? You're not any good at it. This is like a whole new fresh, and you just go straight for it. It doesn't matter what happens, respect it and respect the other athletes around you. Might beat you, but as long as you do your best, you get stuck in it every time, you know. Experience yeah. is so important. I can't exp- describe to it, lads. You know, you know, it's so important. It's yeah, key. It really does help. We got um, another we got another super chat here from Matthew Anderson. He said, Do you think men need to start at 90 kilos, level it out, and get rid of the 80 kilos like they have at the Arnold's? And will you be at the Royal Albert Hall on Saturday? I guess he's talking about weight classes. I assume um, so. Um, yeah. I, I, I was never... <laughs> I'm probably the lightest I've ever been in, in in like my adult life right now. I was chucked into the heavyweights and that's the way it was. To be honest, they only had the 105s back then as well. But I, I think the, the lighter weight classes have been a good thing. You know, it's allowed more people to, to do the sport because not everyone is a genetic freak that's going to be you know, a a heavyweight. So, uh, and some of the under, under 80 kilos, the under 90 kilos, they do some mega impressive things. Yeah. It's, I think having them is, it keeps it safer as well. You don't get people who are, you know, however tall Dale is, let's say just under six foot, by a number of <laughs> short. <laughs> that was generous. You're not trying to weigh 180 kilos. You're not going to do something stupid to be really heavy because that's the only option. You yeah. were dominant in the 80s, filled that class out, went to the 90s, dominant there, filled that class out, and you know, pushing into the one. In fact, that seems like the best way to do it is to just give people that stepping stone to slowly Some, build some up. people won't ever be able to compete as a heavyweight. You know, no. they, they might be able to compete on one event or something like that, but as a whole, weight classes are a good thing because they allow more people to do the sport that they enjoy. And, I, mean, I totally and agree. It's like it's like martial arts, boxing, etc. You know what I mean? There's weight categories there for a reason, and I think... Like if what like Britain's strongest man this year, I think it was like was like twenty odd people who've done the under eighties category, something like that. Yeah, yeah. There's a, fair, there's a fair there's a fair bit, and I think there is a catchment area for it. So I don't think it should be excluded where it's like, oh, if you're eighty kilos, you're not a real strong man, and all this. No, it's basically that's your weight category, and that's where you lift. You know what I mean? Fair play. That's, well, that's we look at fighting, and there's different weight classes and that and stuff like that. So no one uh, talks you know, that way in fighting. No, no. one would go up to. You know, a bantamweight boxer and go, you're not a real boxer. I think no. I think the issue with, with strongman is that world's strongest man is the main title. And everyone goes, Oh, how can they be the world's strongest man? Because that you know, that guy's the world's strongest man, or like you know, Tom Stoltman's the world's strongest man. You have to remember the world's strongest man is just a name, that it's a sport yeah. that we've created, and mm-hmm. that's kind of like our world championship. So you can be world champion in different weight classes, it's yes, absolutely fine. Unbreakable promotion saying 
um, Champions League is a perfect way for getting that experience. Different venues, different kit, different environment. Absolutely. And some of the lads that did well this weekend will be competing in the Champions League yep. in Gloucester later this year. So great well, opportunity for some of those. To add on to that, the SCL is a high, not, there are very, very talented athletes in the SCL. Very much so. I think some people should just, there is an opens comp this weekend. I'm going to go and do that and stop having that. It needs to be a title. It needs to be a promotion. Totally agree. I've known guys, and I, I want to say Don has done it before, who have entered a competition that they were going to dominate, like next level, they're stronger than everyone there. And they've gone, can I compete? Don't count my points. I don't want points. I don't want to mess it up for other people, but they want to go and compete and they want to use different kit. They want that competition environment. But people just don't want to do that. They go, you know, I've had people message me and it's like, I've got my first novice comp next week. How can I get to world's strongest man? So mm. I'll wait 20 years, get really good. <laughs> and then you might be lucky enough to go the right route, to go through the right mm. comp, the right events to get to here. Just do strongman because it's fucking ace. Like I love I love Loz's little grin on his face because he's thinking, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> it, it, is, <laughs> it's, 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 it's something that all three of us have to deal with on a regular basis. Obviously, we all coach and we understand people want to be the best. Well, I yeah. I would say 95% of people that say they want to be the best don't actually want to be the best because they're not willing right. to put the work in that the best guys do. And they're not put, willing to put the time in that it takes oh, to, to get to that kind of level. Wow. And everyone's God. everyone's genetics are different. You know, you do get some freaks that can progress much quicker than others. But for the yeah. majority, you're looking at 10 years of hard training to get to a high level. That's yeah. kind of what you're looking at. And Look at Paul Smith at Royal Albert Hall this weekend. I think he's in like his 12th year of competing. Yeah. Like, and this is his... You know, regular at Britain, strongest man, but this is his first, first giant non international giants live, like an international giants live. Yeah, much. let's let's talk about and this then weekend. Then we got the Royal yeah. Albert Hall happening. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing last year. My last competition, absolutely loved it. Uh, just going to watch this year, and I cannot wait. We've got an incredible lineup. Uh, five really cool events. You guys don't have any athletes competing this weekend for a change, no, so you can just it. enjoy it as fans. I'm weird. looking forward to it. I foolishly thought I had something on this weekend that I now don't have on this weekend, uh, and it's too late to get any tickets. So I'll be watching it on the live you stream. You can or... get a ticket to that. You're Danny Kiss, of course. I might you phone someone up and ask you if they want a coach. <laughs> <I'll> just... <laughs> <laughs> but... You can if, come coach me. I'm not doing anything, but just come coach me. <laughs> if uh, I'm going to be watching it either way, if I'm there or if I'm watching it on the live stream or, you know, whatever, it's it's a show that's not to be missed in any way. Oh, it looks incredible, doesn't it? It's, yeah, I mean, it, like the lineup, we were chatting before we started and the lineup is, it's stacked. Like you've got Fish, World's Strongest Man, Evan, world's strongest man. Andy, world's strongest man. Rob Kearney at Worlds. Fee at Worlds. Bibby has been to Worlds but not competed. Yeah, he's not. I mean, well, he, he should have, he should have competed at Worlds, but he, he's a freak of nature, that guy. No, he poured him at the Royal Albert Hall last year. He's in third, he, third at Royal Albert Hall last year. He, he came third yeah, without doing the stones. It's not bad. And broken axle world record. Yeah. You've there got you go. Paul, who's right, been to world's strongest man. Spencer Remick, who was second to Pavlo Kordiaka at OSG, and Pavlo's unbelievable athlete. Like, there's some athletes you don't mind coming second to. He's definitely one of them. Pavlo's on there. And then Ken McClelland, who came second to the ultimate athlete you don't mind coming second to. Yeah. Like, and then Mitch Hooper, world's strongest man. Maxime Boudreau competed at world's strongest man. <laughs> like... It's a good lineup. It's, it's a very good lineup. And when you look at the events, I mean, this could be like a world championship of grip. <laughs> you got yeah. it could be mate, couldn't it? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. You've got some of the absolute freakiest grips in the world 
competing. I mean, what? So the hook is it the standard pillars, normal giants live? It's the normal giants live Hercules hold. Yep. It's crazy looking at a list, that list, and thinking Felix might not win it. Felix didn't win it last year. In Bibby this beat him, didn't he? Did Bibby and beat him? Evan. I and believe Evan and Evan. Did I well, mean, I think. it was a probably a one-off bad performance for Mark. He's since gone and, and beaten, you know, the, the likes of those guys. But yeah, you you have so many incredibly strong gripped athletes competing in this show. I mean, Ken McClelland, who not many people will know, is a he came second at the Masters to uh, Zadrunas. To be honest, Ken should have competed at Worlds. He's he's been. Yeah. You know, it's very, very close to that before. He's got monstrous hands. I think his grip is going to be phenomenal. We all know how good Paul Smith's grip is. The you know. key with Paul, which is what we, me and Dale chatted about, um, sort of in regards to Ben and a few other athletes, is Paul will be sadder than anyone is willing to be. Like if someone says to him, you could win Hercules Hold, but you will be crying on television and you'll... <laughs> be sobbing and it'll hurt and everything will tell you to quit. He'll do, he's not going to, he's not putting the pillars down. Like they're getting ripped out of his hands. And yeah. like if that drops, you know, he has give it every single last ounce of yeah. strength. And he if has. he doesn't yeah. win it, he's going to make, make people work to, to get ahead. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a farm. weird one. I, I obviously have personal experience on this bit of kit. And I don't think Paul is going to challenge those top three on the grip. No. And that's not that's not to say that Paul doesn't have an incredible grip, because I believe I have an incredible grip. But those handles do suit bigger hands. He's got a bit fatter, are they? They're a little bit bigger than normal kind of grip type events that, that I've done. Yeah. And I think it's very, very difficult for I, I, I think Paul will do great, don't get me wrong. I just think those three on that piece of kit are just phenomenal. I think he's – you never want to say set. I can see him in the top five. Oh, absolutely. And if it's close, I can see him wanting it. Like, he really wants it. Like, chatting to him at the weekend, you know, he's – well, he um, looks phenomenal right now. His performance at UK's was unbelievable. And yeah. let's be honest, these are good events for Paul. Other than the deadlift, yeah. it's a, a great set of events for him. Yeah, they just won't take it out. <laughs> Keep trying to get them to take one out for him. But is um is the is the farmers is it is it turn or is it like they're done at Worlds that year where it's like fifteen meters? It's like top, so the farmers or... walk for anyone just kind of you know tuning in is going to be one hundred and fifty kilos the same way they did at Worlds in two thousand twenty. So they've got a run. They run one way. They turn themselves. They pick the farmers back up and go again. Right. They've got to get past that line, otherwise they're they're out. Um, yeah. and weirdly, like, although I think Novikov could drop a lot of points on the Hercules hold, he was freakishly good at the farmers at Worlds where it was done like this. He's a foot speed, isn't it? He's got he's so quick that he just gets that little bit of recovery time and he can go again. Mm. He's quicker than his grip is bad, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it makes like, a lot of sense. He's yeah. getting there and getting the rest in. I know everyone there's going to be good. The farmers look brutal. I think very thick, very long. Awkward. I think they might suit the slighter athletes as well. I agree. Um, you know, someone like Paul, uh, Mitch Hooper, you know, the sort Max. of Max, Maxime Boudreau as well. Ever another guy that's got a great grip. Yeah. Max got you great just, grip. When you forget <laughs> you've got Maxime Boudreau and you sort of going, oh, this will be the top five. And it's like, he could also be in the top five. He could also win. <laughs> Ken could be in the top it. five. Yeah. Novikov, like it's it's going to be one of the most exciting sort of battle comps I think we've had for a while. Yeah. Dumbbell. We've got the dumbbell. We've got the dumbbell medley, which is 80, I believe, to 120 yeah, kilos. Yeah. It's five dumbbells. Last time they did this was Britain's in 2021. Um, and I think Luke and Hicksy both managed four of the five. Yeah. I've, I've got a feeling Tom either 
did or got really close to it. Yeah, Tom Mayov as well. I know no one did the 120 kilo dumbbell. No, Luke got it locked out and fell over. And someone else got it, sort of had a good go at it, I think. I think it was Bishop, you know. I think Bishop had a good go at it. Because remember, Hicksie was having to use his other arm, wasn't he? See, this yeah. is this is one of the best overheads that Bish could ask for. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For yeah, 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 for sure. For I, sure. Think... I still think Novikov's still just going to be like no one touches if you, Novikov. If you've got a single, you could have one twenty on every single one of them, and Novikov will still win that. It do him if they'd let him, he'd do the eighty and ninety at the same time, and he'd just double <laughs> them up, and then he'll do Man. reps on the one twenty. Like I mean, he can't it... be touched on that. Bibby's shoulder power is incredible, but Novikov's technique is, is just so well, efficient. Though, you know what yeah. I mean? He's just so quick. Yeah. Bibby's, Bibby's really strong, but he's not a quick presser. Mm. He's not quick to stabilise either. You know, if if the Bibby's ref raw power. on it. Just raw yeah. power. Yeah, and I think Very he true. could, similar to Hicksy at that Britain's strongest, obviously Hicksy was injured at the time, but Hicks's pressing power is unbelievable yeah, yeah. in terms of just standing there and pressing. But he struggled with the lockout, struggled with the stability because it's you've got to work so much to get it up there. So I'd say Novikov just walks away with it and then forget like Rob Kearney, really good presser. If his mm -hmm. you know, triceps feeling healthy, he's feeling strong, then... Fantastic presser. You've got Mitch Hooper, who's sort of unknown with his dumbbell. Um, it's Mitch is going to do well. I've seen the training videos. He's doing I've, well. Here he's got a decent coach. I've he's, heard he's, that too. He's a he's a decent coach himself. What what I can offer Mitch is is experience. You know, and yeah. and like you guys know, with top level athletes, you can be a great coach, but when it comes to ourselves, we can be morons. And you just yes. need someone holding you back a little bit or advising. But Mitch, I believe, I believe he's one of four guys that can win this competition. Who's your four, like us? I think I am Bibby, Novikov, Mitch, and Evan. They're my four that can win this. I, I think um, Maxime could do extremely well. I just think the deadlift might cost Maxime a little bit too many points. That's yeah, fair. that's. It's the same as I've said with uh, with Paul. I'd love to see him on the podium. Like personally, it'd mean a lot to. I think Paul's going to do great. I just don't see him getting on the podium. That doesn't mean you know that I'm right and he doesn't. But if it's deadlifts, he just needs to beat a couple of people on the deadlift, and then. But who does he beat through. in that lineup on the deadlift? I don't want to answer that. <laughs> that's, that that's what you've got to look at. You've got, you know. Evan Singleton, who's he's done five reps on this deadlift before. We know how hard this deadlift is. Yeah. He's pulled a thousand pounds. You've got Mark Felix, who is not as good as he used to be, but he's still a solid that's deadlift. Not, that's not saying much, though. You've got certain. Novikov, who's incredible on the axle deadlift and a thousand pound puller. You've got Mitch Hooper, who's just a monstrous deadlifter. You've got Adam Bishop, yeah. who's a monstrous deadlifter. You know, Andy Black is. Maybe not the best in terms of like, you know, some of the events like the dumbbell and stuff, but Andy's got a decent deadlift. Yeah, and you'd still pick Andy to beat Paul at the deadlift, even oh, though he's, yeah. you know, uh, it's it, 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 uh, Rob Kearney. Rob Kearney, he, he, he can pull a, a decent deadlift. It's maybe not with perfect technique, but he, he'll hitch it up and he'll, he'll get it locked out. Is it the globes or the wheels they're using? The wheels. It's the harder one of the Oh, two. yeah, that's a bit... It's the horrible bad. ones, mate. The absolutely dead weight ones. Yeah, it's it's a tough deadlift. So, you know, Paul is going to have to have the deadlift of his life just to get lower mid-table. What yeah. do you think? Four, five? Something like that? Paul won't pull five. No chance in That's hell. what I'm saying. That's what he should be. That's what, like, would get decent points on that. I think three, if he gets... If he gets three, that would be brilliant as well. Yeah, you I think, you think, is... you think last year Paro Dwyer did three on this one. Gav Bilton did three. You know, those are four hundred and twenty-five kilo deadlifters. You know, deadlifters. I'm just yeah. going off the uh, off Brits, and I think two or three at Brits. But Brits was the easier. It was the probably two in it. Brits was the globes, not the um, the wheels. 
yeah you know we're we're all coaches you know people don't progress that quickly in in terms of of deadlifting i think no. I, I totally agree with you i think the rest of the events are awesome for paul it's just uh it's that same question as issue jack had at the weekend that in theory paul could win a couple of events if you know things line up but that's sort of irrelevant if you lose one of them look at Tom 20. But this, is, this is where I, I kind of like when I talk about like the English lads and, and then we talk about going to Giants live. Paul is incredible, but yeah. Paul still isn't good enough to win events against these monsters. No. When you, when you chuck in, you know, Novikov on the dumbbell. Paul's a great dumbbell presser, but he isn't beating Novikov on the dumbbell. No. You look at, no look at the deadlift is his weakest event. The grip event, Paul's got a great grip, but you have three or four of the absolute monstrously strong grips in the world in this competition. I think Farmers for Distance is because he was trying to, well, he had a good pop at the world record for distance a couple of years ago. I think Terry had it at the time. He might still have it. Um, is it like 150 for 100 metres or something like that? And he's... He's good at holding on to farmers and he moves well, but Hercules, he should be good. He did well when it's been in comps before, but against not this level of athlete. So I'd love to see him on the podium, but I think Novikov... I think, I think, I think if Paul can come top six, that's an amazing yeah. performance. And I think he should be proud of himself if he does that. It's, you know, it goes back to, I guess I've got that experience of, of these comps. I know how hard they are. And, yeah. and you know, no Paul, comps there. Paul's right. getting better all the time, but so far his best performance is winning UK's Strongest Man. UK Strongest Man is still a mile off winning Giants live shows and, and, and World Strongest Man. Yep. As well, you we're guys. chatting to um, Terry at the weekend about this, that, at the risk of sounding ageist, but sort of your generation of you, Terry, Eddie, you know, that last sort of crop of athletes, since you lot, the winner of UK's Strongest Man's come, I think fifth is the highest at Brits. Are them Because Pa didn't win it when he got his podium. Like that year's winner is... Mm. Giants is hard. Giants Live is... I think the standard, though, in general, strongman has also moved up in the sense of like now, there's like you like you say, you look at this next competition. You've got nearly every single one of those guys has been to the world's strongest man, or like you say, the American guys have done OSG and competed against the best. So, like, I think the standard now in general, when you go to Giants Live Show, like, look at the Glasgow lineup. Well, oh, like, that, that, that's what I mean. I mean, you talk Whoa. about we're talking about how high the standard is. No one's mentioned Spencer Rimmick. Spencer came second to. Pavlo Kordiaka at OSG. And he's not, we're not even giving him a mention about, you know, this Giants Live. There's, there's I think guys that's because that he, at... he's a bit unknown. I think that's why, Do you know, to like the whole like community, it's a bit like Mitch was unknown before and um, World Strongest Man, unless you were sort of deeply involved, you know. And I think until you see them, like even Pavlo was quite unknown, you know, until um, yeah. Europe's re realistically, I know I, I, we spoke about him a lot, you, but you, like you competed I, against him, didn't you? So. Yeah, that went well. <laughs> <laughs> they all decided to have a little nap, though, didn't he? Well, then, yeah. both, both of you give me a prediction for this weekend. I'm going Novikov, Mitch, Bish. Bish in there, that's cool. I think... These are good events for Bish when you look at it. Good events for him. His deadlift, his deadlift's good, his dumbbell's good. It's, you know, my concern... And I have literally no foundation in fact here at all. My assumption would be if he's going for the 505, he's going to be putting weight on. And if his hands have got fat, his grip's going downhill. Yeah. Like it's that. It could be, could be a factor. <laughs> I love Do you know what I'm looking for? I'm fans. looking forward to seeing Bish and Mitch on the deadlift. I, I hope because somehow it aligns. Month, it's only a month away from the Deadlift World Championships. We're yeah. going to get a real indication of what kind of shape these guys are in. Because realistically, training-wise... What have they got? Two more heavy weeks? Yeah. 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 It's you know, not... They're not going to be going super heavy as we get closer and closer to it. These next few weeks are their really heavy training sessions if they are looking at a legitimate 
big, big number. Yeah, next two weeks. Yeah. So it's yeah, going to be next two weeks. what they do this weekend. It's, I'm going to go Novikov, Evan, Bishop. Interesting. That's yeah. what I'm going for. I had Bish and Evan side by side and made a call when I started talking. I so just it, feel like Evan turns up for Giants Live, especially his recent performance. I don't think you can really like count him out no matter who's against. He just seems to show up to these shows like like a battle of hell. He just like I don't know. He just I think, I think the one day thing. shows in general suit him better. And obviously he's been mm-hmm. over here, he's training on the kit. That all yeah. is gonna make a big difference. And he's got a point to prove. At he the risk know. of yeah getting dressed down by Loz's comment section again, my concern would be coming over with a point to prove is if he can keep control and keep composure and he doesn't go absolutely mental because it's a one-day show where he should do well. If he's sensible and he keeps... If Evan just lets himself perform as good as he is, he could win this event. Like... He's a phenomenal strongman. Yeah, Ev- Ev- Evan's unbelievable. And he got a lot of stick afterwards from maybe just some of the general fans, that, you know, mm. that just watch Worlds, saying he's overhyped and stuff like that. But you both know, you've seen him in Giants live shows. He is a beast when he's on form. Phenomenal. He's not overhyped at all. He's absolutely... I actually, I, I had a conversation guy. with Evan this weekend, and he's another one that I think sometimes just turn up at 90%. Don't worry Not about easy. being at 100. Sometimes when we push to 100, we push too hard and we kind of make, make mistakes, mistakes and, and... and you end up getting hurt. <laughs> Sometimes you're good enough. And Zadrunas was great at this. Zadrunas would go to comp after comp and just be 80%. Yeah. You know? But his 80% was that damn good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, his 80% really was fun. okay. But he yeah. said it at, um, I think, it was it Fortissimus when Poundstone won? He said... Next year, I have to turn up at 100%. Like, yeah, this 2008, he thought he could cruise it and he nearly cruised it. Like, he nearly won by, yeah, not trying that hard. And, and then, then Derek home. done like this mental, weird lift that we've never seen before. Do you remember? Do yeah. you remember Big Z's face when that happened? It was like, oh, was, <laughs> that was one of the best moments. Uh, Brian's keg toss face. It's one of those, uh, <laughs> this time will never be beaten. Oh, It's just been beaten. There's been, there's been a few it. amazing moments like that in Strongman though, hasn't there? Yeah, yeah. there's some funny ones. Ollie Thompson has an amazing video of him at Britain's Strongest Man trying to throw a keg over and it keeps hitting it and nearly hitting him. And you could see how like he's trying to laugh, but he's that angry. He doesn't know what to do and he keeps doing it. It's it's unbelievable. It's absolutely out of the because Do you know he like... If you know him, you know what his face is like, and you can't work out whether he wants to punch the keg or like have a beer out of it. <laughs> and he just goes, "Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do." <laughs> been, yeah. it. Absolutely. He, he, <laughs> so, so there's there's been a few moments like that, but we got a lot to look forward to. The Deadlift World Championships a month away. Oh, there's don't. Strongman Champions I'm League so going to be in the UK. That. Britain's Strongest Woman's coming up. There's the Glasgow show. There's the the show, the team show in um, October. Got the Rogue Invitational still to look forward to. There's it's so much happening for this year. Yeah, Scotland's got strongest OSG. Man. We've got it's Strongman is in a in a fantastic place at the moment, and it's yeah. it's just as a fan of the sport, it's so fucking amazing to see that. You look at the list of athletes we've got in every event that's coming up this year. You buy a ticket to a Giants live show, just pick one, and it's going to be amazing. You're in for a treat, aren't you? Go absolutely. If you've got a spare weekend, go to an SEL show because you'll see amazing strongmen. Go to Britain's strongest woman. Full list of that out. When's the full list for the SEL out? It's very soon, isn't it? Uh, It will probably be out next week. Are you doing that? Maybe. <laughs> no. Look, maybe not. <laughs> no, we, we, no, will be, I like we will it. be announcing. I, I think there's still a couple more to be announced, but um, yeah, there's about 12 athletes now that are confirmed for it. So it's going to be a good show. And I, I'm really looking forward to it because it's in my old hometown of Gloucester. So, But the thing right. is, um, 
obviously Ryan's done really well this weekend. He's got himself an Arnold UK spot. Um, and also there's talks for maybe going to the SCL as well. And that's just from him turning up to the show, winning England. And look at look at where that's taken athletes yeah. now. So you've got like SCL, which can lead on to more like adventure on the world to do Turkey, Serbia, Finland, you know. So that's one athlete that can just get flew off and took yeah. away, you know what I mean? And um, yeah. Ben from that short the weekend, we know he's doing SCL world finals, uh, world team finals with Rhino. And these are all like these grassroots guys who are coming through. We're starting to pip a few little international experiences. Uh, Lewis Jack yeah, and Scott yeah. Milne, they just went over to Lithuania yeah. for Big Z's competition. You know, it's great. So we're starting to see some of these British guys like pass off all over the place and really get some experience. And it's unbelievable to see. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's oh, really cool. You think that, and that's not even talking about the top British guys. No. Like, yeah. It's crazy. The standard is mental. No, it's an exciting so, time for Strongman. It's really. It is. So when are we talking? The, when's the next talking, giant... right? Yeah. So, Wales, England, Scotland, Ireland. Heavyweight strongman. Who's got the best strength and depth? Top 10 out of the home nations. You should all comment and say as well. Yeah. Who do you guys think watching? I mean, that's... A, m- m- it, Come it's on. easy in my head to just kind of go to England, but then you think, oh crap, you've got the Stoltmans, you've got Andy Black. You've got you know, Lewis Jack as well. You've got Lewis Jack. You've got some, some amazing strong men up in Scotland. You know, I think the women's side, I'd probably say England, but then you've got Rebecca Roberts in Wales. Yeah. You know, it's you've got Parr in Ireland. <laughs> Come on, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking. I'd say England. For the top I'd 10. say if we're talking in depth, if we're talking really in depth, then yeah. then it's England. I'd but, say pinnacle Scotland, obviously. Like the lads aren't <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. by anyone. I agree. I agree. But for, I mean, the, the fact that Scotland yeah. have two 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 world strongest man finalists, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's hard to don't get done started. It's not just a finalist, by the way. Well, one of them did all right. Two time yeah. champion. Is he going to come back and be a three time champion? Um, the evening after World's Strongest Man, whilst we were enjoying World's Strongest Man, uh, he said he wants six, so we've got a few. Fair six. one, fair enough, fair one. Well, that, but can you imagine that? You might as well. He's like, six, brother Luke, you're getting none, okay? <laughs> well, Tom's got years on him, Tom's got yeah. 10 years, hasn't he? So. so, you need to make sure that Luke does better than seventh next year. That's the plan. I'm I'm was that four, four, three times he's been seventh? Two two under me. And okay. then year before he didn't make the final. I think the year before that he was seventh or eighth. He's been seventh every time he's been in the final. Well, we'll we'll get him on the podium next time. We know <laughs> really he's got an Arnold's podium. Yeah. He did. Yeah, he did. So Luke at Worlds needs a perfect, perfect performance. I'll tell, tell you something funny. The Arnold's was a tied podium, wasn't it? They yes. just, Bobby, Bobby and, and Luke. Yep. It's so weird in competitions how rules are different. And I was looking at, I don't know if you saw Giants Live uploaded the Europe's when I won. Yes. And how did second place. Man from Swindon beats the mountain. Yeah. Second place was Thor and Johannes tied. Whereas now they do the yep. winner of the Stones takes the win. So theoretically, if they did that, Thor would have been second. But they, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always different rules every competition. I, we need I some, don't mind splitting it. I think yeah, I've got nothing with splitting it. I think need, it's a bit different when you win. You, you need, need a winner as the winner. Like you, there has to be a winner. But below that, I think split it because look at our show in Sweden. Who you know, hamstring came off and he loaded five stones. Yeah. He deserves to be on the podium. If they'd have tied and it came down to stones where he'd have lost. I don't like the stones rule, me. I don't like the winner of the, the stones. No, I don't either. Like it kind all. of it, it it doesn't favour sort of you know being nah. really good at things. But um, I think count back, good old count back, if you've finished above them, etc. I think that's a fair indication yeah. of how the competition went. Yeah, absolutely. Heather G says Tom wants six world strongest man titles, so he has a higher number of world strongest man titles than Luke has Scotland's strongest man titles. What do you Ooh. think about that? He just wants to beat Puds. Yeah, I think it's, that's uh, uh... <laughs> a few more beers in. He said he wanted ten, so we don't. Ten. <laughs> ten. 
And let's see, let's see how he feels after a few more years doing strong yeah. work. <laughs> a few well, more beers. Yeah, this I, year. I, I remember thinking, yeah, I can do this shit forever. It's fine. My body's fine. Oh, my, uh, <laughs> might miss it We're this here. year, isn't it? We're here having a bit of fun, right? And like, obviously, we didn't do a post world strongest man show, so we can't go into it too much tonight. But what was your best moment at World Strongest Man, lads? And what would you kind of say you learned about certain athletes at World Strongest? And has anyone impressed you really much? And what was your favorite moment at World Strongest Man? Sorry, Laz, I was taking over the show there, but I'm just asking. No, you go for I it. Mean, I'll, I'll sit out because I feel like mine's pretty obvious. No, but... go for it, mate. Just go for it. I'm getting to hug a big sweaty mess when he won a World's Strongest Man trophy. Yeah. That's your best moment. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that's the best, best moment of my life, you know. It's one of my mates and he won World's Strongest Man. I got it's to pretty, be there and it's pretty damn jump cool. over his wife to try not to elbow her in the face because we were all <laughs> trying to hug him. But, no, that's it. Like, yeah, nothing compares to... You know, it's it's why for seven years I've coached because I knew one day I'd be there to see one of my athletes win World's Strongest Man. Like, it's I believe that you know I was capable as a coach of helping someone do that, and Mm -hmm. to get to be there, to get to like the group chat last year was great, but it nearly killed me. But like actually (laughs) getting to see him and know what he'd done. It's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Who impressed you the most? And apart from, say, for example, Tom and Luke, blah blah blah. Like, was there anyone who was there who you kind of thought, ooh, or like any Mitch, any sort of moment? Mitch, pretty obviously, like he really, you know, he's asking advice for events as he's going out for the event event because he's never done it before, and he's you know crazy, crazy good athlete. Um. And then, I mean, you said not Luke, but Luke winning deadlift in the heats was was pretty yeah. special as well. You know, I've we've we've worked a lot on it, and to get the result was good. Felix's grip as well. When we were going for a like, we we're like, oh, we'll watch Felix and we'll go for a coffee. And then someone's like, look, we've not got time. Like, let's just start going to get a coffee. Like, we know we win. And we walked like the length of the um, where the truck pull was because the uh, grip event was at the end of it. We were walking away. We're like he's still he's still holding it. So, <laughs> no. so we had time to jog back to the front, and he's just there, just holding on. And we're like, yeah, no, Mark Felix still got a pretty good grip. Mark, I think yeah. his legs failed before his hands did. <laughs> Mark's grip is ridiculous. Like. I saw him on the weekend and, and you guys know I'm doing like arm wrestling and stuff. So I was just kind of like hooking up to him and it was just weird. My hand just kind of got enveloped by this big hand. I was like, Where's my hand gone? He just, he's like just, you've not got small hands. No, no, no. I have reasonably big hands. And it's just like, I just felt like this little boy, uh, he'd be an amazing arm wrestler, but that's a, a story for another day. I'll tell you what, we've got a comment that while you're on here, Dan, I want you to address this one. So Joe Oliver, um, thank you for the comment. I feel like to be classed as one of the greatest, like Z, multiple Arnold's and Europe's titles are just as important as Worlds. How do you feel about that? Yeah, 100%. Um, just because he wants to win six World's Strongest Man titles doesn't mean he's not planning on winning a load of other stuff as well. Um, Marius still has the record for the most Europe titles, though. Yeah. I do believe. Yeah. Marius, Marius has got the most yeah. Europe's Strongest Man titles. But, yeah. It's we we've, we've got some plans and trying to get schedules right and you know it's frustration that those three competitions for some reason are really close together. Mm. Yeah, so, I think it, it's difficult these days. There's so many big competitions, you know. There's so no, heavy. There's yeah. not. They're not Athletes like shows. need to be selective about what they do i think at one point it was like the arnold's and worlds they were the two yeah, shows yeah. and you had like the arnold's in march kind of time and then worlds was kind of like september time but Perfect. then the yeah. um, schedules kind of changed since then and now we've got you know a lot of great giants live shows there's a rogue invitational there's the competitions that have happened in dubai and with the worst and there's you know there's been sure so classic many, sure classic yeah. is out there now 
And there, there's a lot more big shows. So athletes, I mean, it's great for Strongman because now there's more opportunities for more of us, you know, to, mm, yeah. to win some prize money. Because at one point, it was literally Zadrinus will win or Shaw will win and everyone else is trying to pick up the scraps in between. Whereas now there's a lot more opportunities for athletes to be pros and to, to go and win some decent prize money in, in different events. And we saw that last year, lots of different winners in lots of different, you know, big yeah. major competitions. But if you think like a competition like the Shaw Classic, which is a relatively new show and, you know, they're building that momentum, but you're looking at a 200 kilo log for reps. Like you're not going back to back into another show. Like it's not 140 logs anymore. You can't, you can't, what was it Z did? 27 comps in a year and he won all of them. Like you can't, I don't think any athlete can do that anymore. No. I don't think the weight of the shows turning up to the, all the standard is too high to do that now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You haven't just got three or four guys. Do you know what I mean? You've got like, plenty of people. Comment here, guys. Quick question for all of you. Uh, as a trainer, what is the hardest part when training a professional athlete? We all train professional athletes. Dale, do you want to start? I'll put it back up from from a, a trainer's point of view. I'll be absolutely honest with you. I find when I first started taking on professional athletes, I put more pressure on myself, worried if they 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 would, they would perform. I think that was my biggest worry when I first started taking people on. But over a period of time, when you get to know the athlete, you realise they're just the same as anyone else you train. They just compete at a higher level. So yeah, you, yeah. after a while, when you get a build a rapport with these sort of athletes, they're just they're still like a client and an athlete. So like when you start stop seeing them as a professional athlete, you see them just as a person and someone who's training, the pressure comes off and you can just learn about them. So I think the hardest part is, is just trying to ensure results. But results don't always happen straight away. I think it takes yeah. time, it takes consistency, and it's just building a good rapport with an athlete. Um, I think... It's not necessarily harder training a professional athlete, but I think you've got to be very, very finely tuned with these guys coming into competitions because the type of weights and stuff they're lifting, the, the chances of injuries and things that happen are extremely high sometimes. So you just got to try and, you know, I just think that relationship with them has to be pretty, pretty important. And you've just got to be able to, you know, just just give them what they need. Sometimes the, the, the hardest part about the training and professional athletes is you don't realise some of these guys they just need to be told they're actually all right and everything's okay. You know? Yeah, you, you kind of hit, hit, I'll, I'll let Dan answer because Dan's always got something different to say, but I, I think you hit the nail on the head in that you got to, you, you see them all as just individual people. You got to, yeah. you got to, you can't look at them as some kind of superstar. You no. got to see them as just a normal person. And we all, no matter who you are, whether you're Zadrunas, us, you know, a complete beginner, we all have normal life that gets in the way. So, it's understanding that individual person, the best kind of cues that will work on them mentally. Cause most people are a little bit insecure, you know, from Absolutely. Eddie Hall, Eddie Hall is insecure at times. You know, he can come across as this, you know, big brash brave guy, but a lot of that is bravado and trying to make up for some insecurities. And, you know, I, I coach a number of, of pros and I know from myself, Life gets in the way. Sometimes you need reassurance from someone. Um, but I don't think that's any different, to, like you say, to training any other clients. It's just on a higher level. That's all it is. They're, mm. they, they tend to be competing at, at the elite level. So there's that pressure in terms of, you know, that, that there's a lot more going on, on these titles. But they're all humans at the, the end of the day. And it's about getting the best performance out of them. Absolutely, hundred percent. Like you bang on. Like Dale nailed it in a story he put up earlier in the Q and A. Like everyone I coach is coached the same. Like it doesn't matter what level you're at, you'll get treated the same. Get the same, you know, pretty basic training, but focused on weaknesses and carries on with with everyone. You know, Tom sends me messages saying I only want to do one set of this because it feels horrific and get those messages off someone training for their first novice comp. Like yeah. the weights are different, but they're, you know, 
like you said, like professional athletes, they're just blokes, most of them. Like, <laughs> you know what? You know what's funny? Than you. Like, they're the same as yeah. everyone else. Like, I just find it funny when you get two completely different people and you realise, like, this is where the... Um, this is where your people skills come into it. So, like, well, since we're talking about professional athletes, like, Gav and Pa are so opposite as people. And their training's so different. That, and how, that is a bad influence on people. Yeah, but how, oh, how, I, how I speak to them is weirdly similar as well. Right? Pa's got these weird things that we just talk, and it just sort of, like, we, we, I can send him something over, and he'll go, what am I doing that for? And then we just... <laughs> We just swap voice notes and that, and they go, ah, okay, okay. Oh, the other, the other day, after, after, after the world, I said, well, when we're getting back to work, let me know. And I just woke up with a message off him one night saying, slag, full stop, and then his next competition. That's all I got from him. And I'm like, oh, hello. So you take it, you need me again. Okay, brilliant. I appreciate that. And whereas Gav will be like ringing me and be like, oh, so we've got this and we've got that, blah, blah, blah. Whereas Pa's not like that. You just talk it to him. It's so funny how like everyone's different, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, it's, yes, just... it's interesting. We've got a question about Par here, so I'll bring it up for um, thank you, Kevin. For oh, Dale, how hard is it to hold Par back from overdoing <laughs> it in the gym? These two men here with me understand this question more than anyone you can ever understand. When I first started working with Par, he was like that naughty kid in school who you can tell he's really good at the lesson, but he doesn't try because he just wants to show off in front of the kids and in the class. But when you actually get to know Pa, I've explained to Dan and Loz, I give him this little leash every now and then where we kind of agree what you can do to be stupid but not be too stupid. Yeah. Evan's going great, apart from pre-Europe's when he decided to, like, miss load the behind it press by about 60 kilo. That wasn't really smart. Um, but apart from that, holding them back is not the issue with Pa. It's letting him have fun in training with, but still making it kind of productive to the to our goals. So this is like our third kind of block together now. So I understand him a lot better now than when I did at the start. And I'll speak to him and I'll program from it. And you know what? It's actually really fun if I'm honest with you because it makes my life a bit more enjoyable because I enjoy it. And it's just, you know, he's, but what, what people don't, the part people don't see about Par pa, pa is he's very serious though. He he takes strongman very seriously. Yeah. But you yeah. The general public only see Jokey Pa talking like an American or doing whatever, but his recovery, his nutrition, his training, his whatever, he's really on it, you know. And he's got I, I even know if, like, from talking to Pa, sometimes he gets a bit annoyed when people just want him to do, like, the Kaz impressions and stuff like that because he wants yeah. to go to the comps and, and he's there to, to compete and win and, you know. Mate, Brit's Pa was a different Pa than anyone's ever seen before. Well, yeah. well, do you remember yeah. that, Dan? First thing I said to you, this is a different Pa. Like, and it paid it, off. Same as Luke at Europe's, you know, when when an athlete's created their persona as being this jokey person and doing all, you know, whatever Pa decides to do, you really notice that switch to when they're, you know, it's time to work. Pa, um, what was the comp after where he just didn't really turn up? Europe's. Mm. Yeah. He had injured shoulder, didn't he? Yeah. And, and then when the log it. didn't go too well, it was kind of like, I'm not feeling Old it today. Came back, but yeah. You know as a coach that if Brit's par is turning up... Oh, man, World's par. World's par was another level, you know, of what he was bringing into the world's strongest man this year. He yeah. was flying. And I mean, he was absolutely bang on. And like, even speaking to him a few days before, and his mind was not like him. Do you know what I mean? Like, when I talked to him sometimes, I'm like... The first click that we ever really had is when we sat down when he came to train with me at, at my place when he was over doing some um, event training. And we actually sat down and had a, like a really good chat, like just an actual adult chat, which me and him don't normally yeah. do very often. And when you get to know your clients a little bit better like that, you, you can like you can feed off that. Do you know what I mean? And I know he does a lot of it because he gives a shit. Mm. And then once you yeah. realise that side of him, you know, I think, I think there's a lot to come from him personally. I think oh, more God, yeah. Just as long as Tom doesn't do Brits, please, can we get Tom to just pull out a Brits? That would be nice. I'd love him to. And Luke. I'd just... love him to as well, to be fair. While we're on this, um, everyone, I this well, I didn't have an argument with Dan and Loz. I just I 
I'm a bit annoyed at the moment because every time I go to these open weight competitions, their guys always seem to beat me. <laughs> my guys. Yeah. It starts no off with Tom and Luke, and then we go to England's at the weekend, and then Ryan does Ben, and I'm just like, I think you've got something against me, like a vendetta or something. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I like trophies, man. <laughs> I like to win as well, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not at my expense. You. I'll not beat you in anything, so I'll just get them. To. <laughs> well, oh. fair one. But I, now you can beat me in a few things. Yeah, probably. We'll have a go. Dominoes. He, he, he beat us at climbing as well. Oh, he definitely yeah, climbing. So, yeah. We'll we'll have go for a day trip one day. All right. Here's a question for, for particularly for Dan. Dan is is good at doing this. How do we avoid torn biceps? Um. Train them, which no one really seems to want to do um, Weird, isn't it? until they come off. Like train arms because you use them in pretty much everything. Uh, don't train too heavy. Warm up properly. Do loads of isometric holds. That's there it. Go. Don't train like a knobhead. And like, don't flip a thousand pound tires in the rain on painted plywood. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. That's definitely a no. <laughs> Never. no. I think a lot, a lot of people kind of get a bit paranoid about the bicep tear things these days. You know, the, there's two common movements where people tend to tear biceps the most. One is a deadlift, normally of a reverse grip. Um, and the main reason people tear a bicep doing that is because their grip is starting to go. Yeah. And they, they they try, usually their hand starts to open up. Where's my hand? starts to open up and then they'll try and bend their arm to kind of compensate for the, the grip giving way. And then the bicep pings. Um, the other me reason may be from dehydration, but as long as your arm is straight and you're flexing your tricep, it shouldn't be an issue as long as your grip holds out. The other event, well, the, the other two events, I guess, Atlas stones can cause them where you're yeah. really squeezing hard and the worst is tire flip. And, you know, you've got to think of a tire is very heavy. You should really be trying to get your chest up against that tire uh, and lift with your legs and hips rather than your arms. Um, yeah. And like anything, start lighter. Don't jump in. I, I had one guy that I was coaching, and he went and did a session on his own, never tire flipped before, and tried to flip a heavy tire. Ended up tearing his bicep. You know, yeah. you've, got, you've got to treat every event like you would a lift in the gym. Progress up to these weights. Don't just jump in there straight away trying to lift a 400-kilo tire. It's not a good idea. Um, no, the other thing is, no, is hydration. No, no. Hydration is very, very important. Making yeah. sure, and, and that's something I made a mistake in terms of training when I was younger. I used to struggle with cramping, wasn't on top of hydration. That is something, because I suffered with it, I am banging onto my clients all the time. Make sure you're hydrated. Make sure you're getting salts in. Make sure you know you're, it's a hot day. Make sure you're drinking even more. It's, uh, I might sound like an annoying twat when I'm doing it, but it's for your own good. A hundred percent. And um, it's also why the majority of people I coach, I try and get them to hook grip deadlifts as well. If you're not going to use straps, use hook grip. Like it, In fact, uh, a strong, for strong man though, most of the time you can use straps. Yeah. Like we, I find it crazy that people don't use straps. Like if they're available <laughs> or if you're moving quick, then... Just hook grip. It feels awful, but you know, the more it hurts, you'll pick it up. The ranks. Vegan Power Dude has sent a super chat. Thank you very much, um, Vegan Power Dude. Good day, folks. Are any are there any promising vegan strength athletes coming up through the ranks? Cheers. Not that I know of. Do you guys? Nope, not that. I, not in strength sports. Like, there's some strong vegans about who. Do other stuff. Strength sports, yeah. you just need to generally sustain I mean, quite a high body mass. There's Patrick Bobamian, who is vegan, who has done strongman in the past. Yeah. Um, right. he, he competed in the Champions League a couple of times and stuff, but he's been more of vegan, I think, towards the not end. Not really. Of not really. I know of. Yeah. I, I can't I, think of any. I don't really know any vegans, really, if I'm honest with you. Just being generally honest. He's just from Darlington, though. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's not to say it's not possible. It's not. You know, it's not to say it's not possible. It's just, it's. I, I guess it's much harder, you know. Um, and I'm not uh, saying it's impossible, by the way. 
I'm just saying I don't no, know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not impossible. It's just, I guess, you're going to have to think outside the box and, and you know, come up with other sources of, of food to to get your, your nutritional needs. Yeah, I'd say it's unlikely, but not impossible. The, you would need to eat such a huge amount of volume of, of foods to replace, I think, the, you know, the, the meats and the, the protein that people get from the standard sources. Yes, there was I that mean, guy on Netflix, wasn't there? Yeah, that's the that's Patrick. Patrick. Well, well, there was um, it was a whole um documentary, wasn't it, on different yeah um, different sports? But, but... there was a guy on Netflix, but that's the only one I've ever seen. I yeah. would say um, it's sort of a tenuous one. Jordan Mulligan, who is making the documentary about the Stol- Stoltmans, it's like a one eighty stone lifter as a like he's not a strength athlete but he's a strong lad as a vegan you know he's yeah. chasing a 300 deadlift he's you know 180 stone 140 overhead like mm-hmm. he's a strong lad but he's i think strong man as well is so brutal like at the top level that if you think about the days around a competition where you're you know putting the most food imaginable in to do that as a vegan, it'd be pretty awful, I think. Yeah. We'll answer a, a couple more questions, guys, because it's getting late now. But um, Joe Oliver oh, is back again. He says, me again, I think mental training is just as important as physical training. As uh, um, So as coaches, do you utilize therapy or sports therapy? I think he's right. talking mental side. Part of being a coach is being a therapist. This is <laughs> this is the biggest thing as a coach. <laughs> it's unavoidable. I know what's going on with all my clients' relationships, with their jobs, like everything. Like you deal with that. Every you just nat- you just naturally become a th- someone to talk to and a therapist, don't you? Yeah, um, and then at the top level, you know, the lads worked with Amy, really public about working with her, and the difference that's come from working with her is, I think, clear for everyone to see, but. For general population, general sort of not Stoltman clients, every single one, you're acting as a therapist every day. And I think there's there's plenty of things athletes can do. And I do certain things to try and push athletes mentally. So sometimes, for instance, I like to do a little series of, of 20 rep squats. Yeah, which is awful. It's awful. And to be honest, as a power lifter, for instance, 20 rep squats aren't really going to benefit you. But as a strong man, they do because 20 rep squats yeah, require a huge amount of mental strength to push yourself. Yeah. Learning you to push to yourself through the pain barrier. And, and you know, I like to, to just put things in occasionally to make people come out of their comfort zone. I think I'm not, I'm not a real believer in That's ice therapy rough. for recovery, but I do believe in it for mental toughness. To go yeah, and sort of, you know just make yourself do something uncomfortable and get yourself through it, it's it's something like I used to try and put myself in uncomfortable positions so that when it came to competing, I could cope. And I was like, okay, this is going to suck, but I'll get through it. And yeah. I do think that mental strength is probably just as important as the physical strength to be a top-level athlete. How many strong guys are there who are mm. mentally not there who will never win anything? Like you can be as I've strong seen, as you want, but I've seen if, I've I've met so many guys that for one rep they're unbelievable, but you put a weight on their back and make them carry it for a distance, or you know, yeah. you get them in a truck pull where their whole body feels like it's on fire and their lungs are burning, and people don't like to put themselves into those situations, and that's one of the hardest things with strongman that people don't maybe appreciate that just watch it yeah no it's it's re- sounds stupid it's really hard you know mm. you're at world's strongest man and they're going the truck pulls uphill all the way this year instead of just going uphill at the end like you imagine pulling a truck pretty like it's not the most fun in the world and then knowing that if you if at any point it stops you're losing distance or you're fighting against gravity like the the mental toughness is 90 percent of being successful as an athlete i'd say yeah i totally agree right one more question king t prettiest coach strongest coach smartest coach i think the smartest coach has to go to dan the prettiest coach has to go to me 
and the strongest coach goes to Dale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say I am neither of the first two and the last one's debate. Man, mental toughness is one of those weird ones, though, isn't it? It's like there's different types of mental toughness. There's being able to put yourself through a pain barrier and then there's also mental toughness, being able to break plateaus. Yeah. Yeah, and just carrying on. Just keep going. A lot of visualisation, believing in yourself, all that kind of stuff, it, it definitely helps. It's... Uh... Right, yeah. guys. It has been a pleasure talking to you both. We've talked for that's that's kind of like a forfeit though, because I'm only the strongest now because you've technically retired. So I'm not even taking that one. And I'm are definitely you, are you on a delay, Dale? I'm definitely not smart. I either. think he's on a delay. It's <laughs> like northern internet. You're definitely not getting the smartest coach after that reaction. <laughs> are you with, are you with us, mate? I think he's definitely on a delay, isn't he? He is on a delay. Okay, in that case, we're going to leave it there. <laughs> guys, right. thank you so much for joining me, as always. Um, you guys can follow both of these gentlemen on Instagram. They're on the channel very often. We will hook up soon. I hope you guys have enjoyed the chat. It's been really yeah. great talking to you all. <laughs> He's definitely on a delay, so I'm going to leave it But leave it there, guys. Don't no, forget, honestly, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. There was times in that way, you were just talking, <laughs> then you were both talking at the same time, and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Dan, I am now. I'm going to say bye to you now. Dale, you'll get this in about five minutes. But I'll I've just put it in me. the private chat, so hopefully <laughs> you'll read it and say it at the, just the right time. Fine. Right, guys, take it easy. We okay. hope you enjoyed it. Speak to you soon. Speak to you soon. <laughs>